Welcome back. This is Business Frontier. We're here at Novotel Bangkok Impact and we talk about the big picture of the hotel industry and the beginning of the hotel and how it's working in synergy with the impact area arena Mung Tong Tani. Now, David, mm -hmm. um, so is it basically your work's done for you? Since the impact arena Mung Tong Tani draws in visitors, uh, exhibition participants, mm -hmm. then, then there's nothing for you to do. Well, uh, <laughs> how do you actually market the hotel, mm -hmm. um, whether it be to to exhibition participants mm -hmm. or other clients that you need to, to make sure that the hotel actually does well? Well, as you alluded to, we're quite fortunate in that impact mm. is so well established and they've got quite an impressive team here. Of they have a huge team. Communications of, mm -hmm. uh, professionals who are writing websites and, uh, and, and, and doing their own creative work on, mm -hmm. on advertisements and posters to a strong sales force that's, again, well established. They've been at this for a while. Uh, so we benefit from that, certainly. But we do have our own in-house team as well, smaller, more modest, mm -hmm. because we you don't need know. to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. There's a good, uh, a good team at work. We need to complement their efforts. We're also benefiting from a course presence. Um, again, they have a worldwide marketing team. We have global promotions, regional promotions mm -hmm. that go out on, on websites around the world um, and advertisements around the world. So mm -hmm. we benefit from that uh, in the big picture, the image and, and, and tactical advertising from Accor. Impact is booking. They're the ones who are booking the big events. We, we have group inquiries for smaller meetings, but um, they the big events that, the that, that pay the bills at Impact uh -huh. are really, again, uh, sometimes they, they book events that are well established, mm. but Impact also creates many of the events, many of the exhibitions and conferences that are here. They have a team that, that puts together, creates and markets these events. So we complement their efforts, of course, but our sales team has to be face to face with the local corporate community, the local government mm. and ministries, and we've had uh, change in, 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 uh, in administration administrations mm -hmm. in the last several months. So they've been quite busy, of course, um, and all the industrial estates visiting them uh, to make sure that they know about us. Because really, uh, Accor is well-established, Novotel is well-established, mm. Impact is well-established, but people, people need to know that we're here. Um, so you're talking about in terms of creating that interpersonal relationship between absolutely. the hotel and potential clients. Yeah. These big shows, these big conferences will often have uh, designate official hotels, but they have to have a wide range because mm. people have varying uh, interests while they're here. Some want to stay by the riverside, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. want to stay downtown, mm -hmm. others sort of looking for convenience and star levels, all of the different factors you talked about. But we have to find a way to stand out and let people know that we're here. So we're working with the event organizers. We're working with the impact team. Again, our sales force is out, uh, spends more time out of the hotel than in, just to make sure we know our clients face to face. Mm. Um, on a more local level, uh, we're trying to connect with the Mong Tong Tani and the Nichira Tani and the local residents mm -hmm. to raise our profile for food and beverage, for the spa, the things that the local people will come mm. uh, to enjoy and, and, and maybe don't know is here. Everyone, again, knows impact, but not everyone knows we're here yet. So uh, with the great synergy and the great advantage that we have, mm. we're just trying to make face-to-face -face contact with people. And okay. we do that through uh, our own e-newsletters, mm -hmm. our, our, our Facebook page, our websites, mm -hmm. and a lot of direct uh, email blasts and, and other, other campaigns. David, do you think the Novotel Bangkok Impact has the advantage since you're one of the first international brands or international mm -hmm. faces mm -hmm. in around this area. Mm -hmm. um, Italian restaurant, spa, hotel great spa. Mm -hmm. I mean, does it put you at, at an advantage compared to other uh, similar facilities in the area? Oh, certainly. Or does it put you at a disadvantage when people expect hotel, spa, hotel, Italian restaurant, expensive, not going to come? Well, there is a perception issue mm -hmm. um, with some. and. That's a bit of a reflection on, on the local market as well, because regrettably, some <coughs> of the established hotels in this area, um, they're pricing themselves quite low. And with our arrival to the market, I thought that was a great opportunity for them to perhaps price with a little more confidence mm. that, that, that the market is getting more depth and more quality, but in, in almost a reflexive reac reaction, they drop prices. Wow. Um, and it's very easy to drop prices, but it takes a long time to bring them back mm -hmm. up. So I, I, I didn't think that was a healthy move 
for because, you to join in the prize we're, you know, wall. We, we, well, we won't, mm -hmm. and I don't want to because, mm -hmm. I, again, I'd rather price value and quality. And, and there's some fine competitors mm. who really should be getting a better, better rate, in my opinion. Um, but there needs to be uh, confidence in the market. And, you know, nobody wins in the long run with discounting. You might get a little market share in a short term, mm. but there may be many reasons that motivate them, cash flow concerns, what have you. But for a market to, to prosper and to grow, rates have to sustain that growth because expenses go up every year. Mm -hmm. And if rates aren't going up, in fact, if they're going the other direction, you know, that's a bad recipe and eventually it, it doesn't work. Right. So we've tried to stay true to our pricing policy and we, I still consider us a, good, a great value. Mm -hmm. uh, we wish the market would, and I think you'll find that comment from any hotel manager in, in Bangkok. They want the market to price all of the, the richness of Thailand and, and, and the... And it's a wonderful destination. From, from the viewpoints of, of yeah. travelers, though, well, sure. right? Tra but, but we could bolster our rates a little bit and still be a great, a great bargain compared to other markets around the world. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, really, uh, you look at Singapore, Shanghai, Hong Kong. Expensive even rooms. Even Hanoi, you know, uh, mm. travel can be quite, quite cost, quite expensive. Mm. Here we are a great value, but there's so much room, you know, and, and I think we're going to see it, mm. you know, if... You know, I, I've been encouraged by the new administration and, and the seeming uh, energy and, and confidence that after the floods, people seem to, they're not, they're not running away. They're coming back. We hope the news stays quiet. Yesterday's events certainly aren't going to help anybody. Yes, yes. You know? well, well, this is Thailand after all, right? Mm. But you mentioned a little bit as well about your online presence, yeah. e-newsletters, emails, mm -hmm. a Facebook page even. For a formal, well, I consider uh, Novotel, Accor, like uh, uh, an international brand. Mm -hmm. um, does social network communication work to the, to the advantage of the brand or does it take away the... No, I, the professional professional look of I don't the brand. think I don't think that has to be the case I think social media is getting a bigger and bigger presence mm. everywhere and so you could be a traditionalist or a purist and, and stay on the sidelines and perhaps mm. lose out on something mm. um, people are on the go mm. and they like the, you, you can get news in so many ways now um, it doesn't hurt you can still have a Facebook page and do it quite professionally and right. you know I'm I'm not the the leader of the tech world, you know, I'm still working on Twitter and trying to figure out some things. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, it, you know, Foursquare, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and even the travel websites, they all have TripAdvisor. Mm. That's social media. So you gotta go. People are checking, mm -hmm. especially new destinations. They're, they're going on to TripAdvisor and trying to find out about Bangkok and a particular hotel. Mm. And, and they're more encouraged to, to book when they see good comments coming out. So it's here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, we don't, we'd be foolish to ignore it. And, and uh, we're embracing it. We're just trying to find more ways to reach people. We we'll put you on our database list and email you too. Sure, <laughs> sure. Now let's talk competition a little bit. You mm -hmm. did say that uh, neighbor hotels have actually reacted mm -hmm. by cutting their prices mm -hmm. and so on when when you arrived at the scene. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with other competitors? I mean, I mean, or or you're just staying still, promoting your core product and attracting people that matches your, your target customer profile? Well, uh, that's part of it. I mean, you, you, you technically can't discuss rates with your competitors. Uh, there's some antitrust issues there. Mm -hmm. But we, you, know, you like to know your neighbors. You like to know um, your colleagues in the industry. Um, so you try to have I like that, neighbors and colleagues. You try, to, you try to have marketplace gatherings and meetings, what, be it over lunch or cocktails or at an industry event, uh, discussion panel, whatnot. And, and, you know, you try to break down those walls a little bit and you can talk about it because some, some people are reacting to strong ownership pressure, you know. And it's not, not that people are bad businessmen. It's just different strategies. Could be corporate-driven, could be ownership-driven, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or it could be just, uh, you know, desire for short-term boost. You know, as a community, um, we can talk about, uh, help to reassure people and remind them of all the riches that we have here in, in, in Thailand and in Bangkok, and hopefully, collectively, it comes. You know, we, we didn't talk about service departments, but that's another big, I'm not threat to the industry, but a, no, a new player. Um, these, what used to be apartment buildings, now they're quasi-hotels, uh -huh. service departments, mm -hmm. long stay. There's so many options that people just tend to get a little nervous and so 
pricing is the easiest thing to do, but it's the hardest thing to get out of. So again, as a, as a market, as a community, mm -hmm. hopefully we can build the confidence, uh, confidence level and get people back to uh, a healthier outlook because in the long run, that's what we all need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now let's talk challenges mm -hmm. for uh, Novotel uh, Bangkok impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've, Thailand has gone through so much. Yeah. We've had uh, political instability, we've had elections, we've had um, street riots, mm -hmm. we've had bombings and the floods. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no guarantee that these things won't happen again. I mean, impact, uh, Novotel Bangkok had actually adapt itself, adapted itself mm -hmm. to survive those challenges, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Give us an example of which was the perhaps most, most challenging one uh, for, for the hotel to overcome. Well, uh, on a, a more personal note, what I saw the most of was the floods because we're, we're a bit insulated from downtown protests. I mean, the protests will always be in more high, high sure. profile mm -hmm. venues. Mm -hmm. So anything uh, in the city center will get more attention mm -hmm. in that regard. And that's just fine, <laughs> quite <laughs> honestly. Um, as a convention center, my location, certainly instability, uh, political or... Uh, On a national that, scale. That, national, that's going to that's gonna hurt us because again, it's the long-term nature mm -hmm. of, of convention bookings. But for, for us here, we are on the northern, uh, northern frontier, so to speak, and you didn't have to go more than a half a kilometer in three different directions to see high water. And what a great exercise and challenge for us because we were threatened as well. But the impact team and infrastructure, I mean, we, we, we had our own crisis plan here in the hotel and mm -hmm. we were very quick with our sandbags and our retaining walls and our extra pumps and, and supplies. But Impact really has uh, a strong infrastructure here, and they had construction projects going on, so they had heavy equipment at hand. But my God, the the command center that was running 24 hours a day with with news streams and cameras everywhere, with water readings being taken every hour hmm. at different canals and wow. flongs. Your own command center. Yeah. Well, the Impact, and mm -hmm. we uh, we were a part of that, was so impressive, and really we ran our own command center here. And they opened the doors to the Challenger Hall. We had 10,000 cars parked inside during the floods. Um, they were very uh, uh, generous with the local community. Mm. At and that time. We, we, we came to be seen as a bit of a haven. They had to close down the, the halls exactly. for our events because people couldn't get in and out mm -hmm. or they didn't want to schedule. The, they postponed their they events. They don't know whether they could get back to their But home. we did become somewhat of a safe haven. This hotel was running full mm. for people who were displaced be they local residents or industrial mm -hmm, estates mm -hmm. who had to set up camp here for a while. So that was a great opportunity for, for well, CSR to test ourselves well. and to see and to see what we're capable of doing. And now we know um, that we've got the know-how, that mm. we've got the resources, and now an even better plan in place for next year. So um, well, we hope we don't have to go Hopefully there. Hopefully, note. So that was that's how one of the things we did, and we're, we're hand in hand with the rest of the city when it comes to the, the overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when you talk CSR at the beginning, it, how can you put a monetary value on, for example, opening up impact to the parking yeah. area, uh, the hotel rooms to help the flood mm -hmm. victims was, was a big plus for their hotel and its image. Mm -hmm. Is it, well, I, I don't ask, I don't need to ask if it's important, is it? It is, it, I couldn't tell you, I couldn't qualify it or quantify it with a dollar figure or a bot figure, but there's so many other things. I mean, if you ever saw Chiang Watana during that period, which there were more boats mm -hmm. than trucks, and you, I don't even say cars because cars couldn't make it, exactly. it was deep water. But we ran, the impact was running a huge truck, I don't quite a, a know the size truck. of it, that just went up and down Chiang Watana all day and people would be standing on an island mm. and just taking people, helping them get from one end to the other. Um, unheralded there were no cameras there to take pictures it was just a nice thing to mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. and our equipment went to help build retaining walls along Klong Prapa and, and uh, all these other areas so you know it's 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 good for the you know I say good for impact good for the hotel good, good for, for the, the community, community good for impact it's the right thing to do mm. and and uh, the owners were so generous and it was not there was no debate it just you did what what you felt you needed mm. to do for the community. I like that. That was the right thing to do. Now, that must be a good time. You, when did you arrive in Thailand? October 2010. You brought the floods with you, didn't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> so the experience here. Take no credit for that. The experiences here, David, it must be quite different from, from 
your experience in the hotel industry mm -hmm. elsewhere around the world. I mean, and you saw the floods and how, how the, all the great spirits of the Thai people mm -hmm. and helping each other during that very difficult time as well. But um, how is your career here different from your experiences in Las Vegas? You mentioned um, China. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit. Well, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful change. Um, I loved my time in China. I spent five years in China before coming to Thailand, and that was a very vibrant time mm. in advance of the Beijing Olympics and the World Expo in Shanghai. Mm. Development, uh, fifth, five years in China during those periods was probably like 50 years anywhere else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. More bridges, more subways, more tunnels, more, more skyscrapers built mm -hmm. in such a short time. Mm -hmm. um, and there was such a rush uh, and a sincere desire to get on the big stage. Mm -hmm. and. Embracing things Western, yet at the same time, there's some interesting political uh, undercurrents also. But it was a great time, mm. great, interesting time. Moving from China to Thailand in the winter, mm. one of my smarter moves. It was a very, uh, you know, the weather was so nice when we arrived. I didn't see rain for the first two months. Mm -hmm. um, but again, not just warmer in climate, but warmer in spirit. Mm. Uh, such a great welcome and uh, refreshing, refreshing uh, lifestyle and and the people it just was wonderful people always say thai people are sabai sabai people you know <laughs> we we take it easy we're always late and when we're late we say the traffic was bad <laughs> um is it difficult for you to adjust your um working style uh, communication style when you move from countries to countries sure sure when i moved from new york to china i learned that i walk too fast i talk too fast and i drank too much coffee so I had to be a little, I had to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, not just because my Mandarin was non-existent at the time, it's okay now, but I, I had, to, had to be less direct. In New York, we're very cordial in business, but we usually get to the you point faster. What you, know, you mean? Because and you people say always it. feel they, they want to manage their time very well. Mm -hmm. In China, you, you have a cup of tea and you talk about it, you know. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Maybe after Things go finish. more circular than straight lines. So I had to learn to. Mm to get my messages, to, to have my messages heard and accepted, or to learn. I had to slow down a mm. bit. Um, was that your first um, Asian experience? No, I worked in the Philippines, in, in Manila, for a year, uh, 10 years ago. It's 2001, and I really thought that was the beginning of a, a nice Asian career, because I really enjoyed it. But then the tragic events of 9-11 happened, and hotels around the world be mm. emptied out. Mm -hmm. Airlines or air, airplanes were empty, mm -hmm. so most of the foreigners went home. Uh, so so it took me a few years to come back, mm -hmm. uh, to get back mm -hmm. uh, to Asia, and I was went to China in 2005. Um, what about Thailand? What are the changes you had to make to yourself and your working style? Well, you uh, again, it's similar to, to China, it wasn't so much the speed, but also learning to uh, get beyond the smile and the why, because I felt that people were always mm. agreeable. But I they say to, yes, but, but they I needed, don't mean yes. I really needed to draw answers from people because I don't think anyone wanted to disappoint you mm. or to say no. But I, I need, I think we all need uh, more direct communication sometimes. Hey, this is after just says one year. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, all, uh, by and large, it's been a wonderful experience, mm. but uh, for one reason or another, people wouldn't give me news when uh, they didn't want to disappoint. But I really would need to know if something is gonna happen by two o'clock mm. or Deadlines. tomorrow at two o'clock. So, right. Um, that, in that regard, I had to try to get beyond the smile. Mm -hmm. All right, David, we'll have to uh, say goodbye. We've run out of time. Thank you so much for oh, sharing my pleasure. with us pleasure. your visions and, and the various... Uh, fun oh, I forgot one question. What's we that? have to talk about that. Funniest experience that you have actually um, gone through when you arrive or, or in the hotel uh, career wow. of yours. Anything <laughs> to share? Well, nothing scandalous I, I'm going to tell you about, but I have, uh, let me tell you that I've been, I, I've been a dog walker at a very high level. I have walked more celebrity dogs. <laughs> as my, a general manager? Not as a general manager, but in my, my way oh, through the mm -hmm, hotel. Mm -hmm. I've worked with some very fine hotels in, in some of the best hospitality cities in the world, like San Francisco and New York and, and Bangkok. And uh, what we do is we're butlers at any level, whether my business card says general manager or assistant manager, um, we're here to take care of our guests. So I've helped people look for missing lovebirds in their rooms. We got out of a cage. And oh, real birds? Real birds. Okay. I've taken uh, Martina Navratilova's six dogs. 
for walks around Union Square in San Francisco and you think it's easy to take care of six dogs on a leash. Um, so you do everything. We've helped people plan weddings um, on mountains, on beaches. Uh, you know, we have a lot of fun requests that mm -hmm. challenge you from time to time. And uh, yeah, there's always going to be some funny stories. <laughs> All right. Uh, most All of right. them we have to keep to ourselves, though. <laughs> No, I'll ask him off camera. But thank you for joining us on Business Frontier. Do you tune in again next time when we share with you the insights and the interesting stories behind various leading businesses in Thailand and around Asia. Sawadee